The fourth generation Audi S6 recipe is a tempting one. A potent Bentley borrowed 420 PS twin turbo V8, quattro four wheel drive, state of the art handling trickery and beautiful build quality. All wrapped up in the kind of motorsport know-how that executive sports saloon rivals usually restrict to the pricier models. The kind of car that Audi does very well indeed. Audi's UK sales success in recent years has been so prolific that rarity is not a word you tend to associate with any of its models, except perhaps this one. The S6, the brand's V8 petrol-powered executive sports saloon, accounts for a vanishingly small part of Ingolstadt's market share. It's a very exclusive car indeed. It used to have a very exclusive engine too, the 435 PS V10 that we saw in the 2006 to 2012 version, which is basically the same as that used in a Lamborghini Gallardo. That's been seen off by emissions legislation, but its replacement, the 4-litre V8 fitted to this fourth generation model launched in 2012, has quite a pedigree of its own. Originally developed by the Volkswagen Group for the Bentley Continental GT, its twin turbos more than compensate for its smaller size. So much so that the 0 to 62 miles per hour time is actually now slightly quicker at just 4.7 seconds. That comes courtesy of a 420 PS output, which is impressive in its own right, but modest in comparison to the 560 PS developed by the A6 lineup's flagship poster child, the RS6, a car built to deal with super saloons like the BMW M5 and the Mercedes E63 AMG. Still, this S6's engine is quite enough to take that fight squarely to a select group of petrol-powered executive contenders that are merely very fast. Models like the BMW 550i and the Jaguar XF 3.0-litre SC. Cars that are very desirable, that almost everyone would very much like, and that almost nobody buys. Hence, the rarity of this S6. So if you do want to own one, here's what you're going to need to know. If you're coming to this car expecting Brands Hatch for the boardroom, then you need to readjust your thinking just a wee bit. Sure, the twin-turbo 4-litre TFSI V8 makes this car very, very fast. 550 newton metres of torque, meaning that uh, 62 miles per hour from rest is absolutely demolished in just 4.7 seconds, on the way to a top speed that could nudge 190 miles per hour, where a restrictor not to cut in at 155 miles per hour. And it corners on rails for reasons I'll explain in a minute, but it does all of this without making a song and dance about it. Truly, this is performance by stealth. S6 prospects like it like that. Those that don't generally buy something else. It's as simple as that. But that something else is usually hamstrung as soon as the rain starts to fall or you have an icy morning to contend with. All the other brand alternatives to this S6 Quattro you see are rear wheel driven. And there's a purity to that, of course, that a 4x4 layout doesn't have. But Audi has taken steps to offer some of it in this third generation model by giving the setup a rearward bias. Couple all of that technology to a Tiptronic automatic gearbox with Formula One style gear shift paddles and some of the most sophisticated traction control electronics yet devised and you have a car that will be very tough to beat in a traffic light Grand Prix. But what about round your favourite B roads? Yes, here too, Audi had already developed firmer sports suspension for the third generation of this car. And this Mark IV model goes a step further by including a self-locking differential with a sport differential on the rear axle. Thanks to this, during hard driving, the lion's share of the power flows to the outside wheel to literally push the car through the corner. And there's more, much more. This S6 gets air suspension for the first time, a load setup featuring variable damping, which can alter the right height of the body between three levels for what Audi hopes is a multifaceted driving experience. It's designed to perfectly complement the optional dynamic steering that adapts both its ratio and boost according to speed and uses slight, nearly imperceptible steering corrections 
to stabilise handling at the cornering limits. Drive like this and you will have selected the most focused of the models available via the Audi Drive Select system, dynamic or indeed set up your S6 for ultimate performance like a, a race driver would set up his race car via the individual settings. If you're really throwing the thing about though, you might want to switch the ESP stability control into its interim sports setting, which will give you a bit more opposite lock leeway before all of the stability and traction controls kick in. But, of course, on our traffic-clogged roads, the opportunities for such behaviour are few and far between. Usually, you'll want to settle back and switch the system into auto, so it can adapt to your driving circumstances as the software thinks fit. Or perhaps you could click back into one of the more easy-going settings, comfort, for a magic carpet, air-suspended ride, or even efficiency, where all the vehicle systems become frugally minded. It's when you're driving like this that you suddenly start to appreciate something, that this car is almost eerily quiet. And there's a reason for that. The engine deactivates four of its eight cylinders for extra efficiency on part throttle at low speeds, at which point the car realizes that you want greater refinement. In response to that, an active noise cancellation system cuts in. Four microphones integrated into the headlining record noise in the car which is then analysed by a computer and if that computer detects intrusive sound elements it broadcasts an anti-phase sound through the stereo speakers which combines with the intrusive noise and largely cancels it out. But then there are times when you do want noise, when you're powering through the gears and want to hear exactly what that twin turbo V8 can do. Audi understands that as well, so there's a sound actuator in the exhaust system to emphasise the sonorous sound of this thumping 420 PS power plant under hard throttle. That only leaves the brakes. This particular car features the expensive option of high performance ceramic discs, offering vastly improved temperature tolerance for the best possible resistance to brake fade and an operating life of up to 186,000 miles in everyday use, which is four times the lifespan of a steel disc. Just remember to budget for replacements. You won't be considering an Audi S6 if you want to shout about your performance pretensions. This car doesn't do that. In fact, over the years, it's got the whole business of not doing that down to a very fine art. A lot of it's in the detail, you see. Audi S cars have a reputation for styling subtlety. And whether you order it as a saloon or an estate, this one is no exception. For the record, this model is actually 16mm longer than a standard A6 or 8mm longer if you're looking at the Avant Estate version. First impressions though are more likely to centre on the single frame sports aluminium front grille with its chromed horizontal double bars, a real work of art. There's also more aluminium style trim on the door mirror which is a classic S brand touch plus these gorgeous sports alloy wheels. And round the back you've got a subtle integrated boot spoiler and four chrome tailpipes surrounded by this grey diffuser. So that means most people won't know what has just blown past them and is disappearing off into the distance. The interior is similarly restrained but impressive. Everywhere you look there's a beautiful blend of craftsmanship and technology and a discreet reminder of what you've actually bought with illuminated door sill trims and displays for the MMI and of course the driver information systems that highlight the S6 logo when you start the car up. A red ring adorns the start-stop button, an aluminium class the selector lever, plus the footrest, the pedals and the soft keys of the MMI operating system get a gleaming aluminium style finish. There's full leather of course and at the front, multi-way power adjustable sports seats that are designed exclusively for this model. The three-spoke S Quattro steering wheel has colour contrasting stitching and a set of aluminium looking shift paddles just behind it. Beyond that you view a set of bespoke instruments featuring grey dials with white needles.
Here in the back in these exquisitely stitched leather seats, there's comfortable room for two people. Although not three, this very high central transmission tunnel puts paid to that. And what about luggage space? Well, at 530 litres, it's a little more than you get in a rival BMW 550i or Jaguar's XF 3 litre SC. And you can extend this to 995 litres by simply flattening the standard split folding rear seats. But if you're likely to be doing that very often, then the Avant Estate version will be a better bet for you. This provides 565 litres with all the seats in place, or up to 1,680 litres with the rear seats flattened. As a halfway house between both body styles, Audi also offers the S6's mechanical package as an S7 model, a car with a 535 litre boot that's extendable to 1,390 litres. You'll need a budget of around £55,000 for S6 ownership and there's a premium of just over £2,500 if you want to progress from this saloon to the Avant Estate body style. That's about £7,000 more than you'd pay for, say, a sporty S-Line trim version of the fastest variant you'll find in the standard A6 range. That's the 3-litre by TDI diesel. But it's over £20,000 less than you'll pay for Audi's 560 PS RS6 model, a car that will get you from rest to 62 miles per hour, just 0.7 seconds faster, and is only available as an estate. If you like the whole S6 package but would prefer a five-door hatchback body style, then it's worth knowing that Audi's S7 model provides exactly that, but at a premium of just under £8,000. As for rivals, well, though Jaguar's supercharged XF 3.0-litre SC might tempt some, it has 80 PS less, is a second and a half slower to 60, and it will only save you around £7,000. No. The car this S6 is most directly targeted at has a BMW badge in the bonnet. But the Munich Maker's 550i has a V8 that's nearly 20 PS down in that of this Audi, so it struggles to crack 5 seconds for the rest to 62 miles per hour sprint. Plus, it's only two-wheel drive and it costs nearly a couple of thousand pounds more. If, having considered all of that, you conclude that it is an S6 that you really want, then you're going to want to know what's included in the standard buying proposition. Now, as we don't have all night, I'm not going to trouble you with the full equipment list, but I will pick out just a few of the highlights. How about the gorgeous 19-inch five-spoke alloy wheels or the sport differential that varies torque between the rear wheels as part of the Quattro four-wheel drive system, firing you through the bends? And how about the S Sports Adaptive Air Suspension, which works with the Drive Select system so that you can set the car up according to your mood? Then there are the creature comforts. The full Valcona leather interior with 12-way power-adjustable heated sports seats and the satellite navigation system with its 6.5-inch folding colour display. But we haven't got to the stuff yet that will really interest the technophiles. Take the optional mobile telephone preparation high with Audi Connect package. That transforms your S6 into a WLAN, that's a wireless local area network hotspot, so that passengers can surf the internet and email via their mobile devices. It also brings customised online services into the car, such as Google Point of Interest, Search by Voice Control, Navigation with Google Earth Images and Google Street View. Another useful feature is the Audi Traffic Information Online service that briefs you on traffic movements along your route and the smartphone Audi Music Stream app that S6 drivers can use to receive, get this, more than 5,000 internet radio stations. If you think all of that's neat, then I think you'll also agree with me that the standard satellite navigation system with its 60 gigabyte hard drive is especially clever. If your car has the necessary special module, it's potentially programmable in all kinds of clever ways that I think really set this car apart from its rivals. For example, if at night it's directed you to a crossroads, it will widen the headlight beam so you can better see the junction. If it's directed you abroad, it'll tweak the headlamps for driving on the right and also change the clock for you. If it's taking you uphill or round tight corners, it'll then pre-warn the automatic gearbox to avoid unnecessary gear changes which will give you a smoother, more efficient journey. 
You can even use it to view Google Earth and get a picture of your destination at the same time as you check out Google News and Weather and create in your car that mobile WLAN hotspot. So as you can probably tell, I just love my gadgets. In fact, were I a potential buyer, I might be prepared to find just a wee bit more for some of the options fitted to this particular car. The advanced 15-speaker Bang & Olufsen sound system with its 6DVD CD glove box changer, the head-up display so that you can get key driving information without taking your eyes off the road. It can even display speed limit signs as you pass them. Then there's the clever top-view parking camera, a boot lid that you can automatically open by just waving your foot beneath the bumper if you're laden down with shopping. And how about the night vision assistant that helps you better see objects and people in the dark? As for safety, well, I was a little surprised to find that you have to pay quite a lot extra for the Audi side assist system that stops you from dangerously pulling out to overtake another car, and the Audi active lane assist system that stops dozy drivers from veering out of their lanes on the highway. But as standard, you do get a more advanced braking system than you'll find on other A6s, even if you don't opt for those pricey carbon fibre ceramic discs. You also get a set of Zenon headlamps you can specify with high beam assist that will dip them automatically at night in the face of oncoming traffic. Plus, there are all the usual airbags and electronic assistance features for braking and traction that you would normally expect. Plus, a stability control system with an extra sport setting to stop the electronics being too intrusive if you decide you're going to drive a bit harder. When manufacturers like Ferrari are introducing start-stop in their cars in a bid to drive down emissions, it's a reminder that nobody gets a free pass. Audi certainly don't, and the latest S6 is notably more efficient than its predecessor, which was a bit of a rogue when it came to economy and emissions. The quoted 21 miles per gallon combined fuel figure of the old V10 powered car always looked hopelessly optimistic. In contrast, this one manages a huge 25% improvement to deliver a far more acceptable 29.4 miles per gallon on the combined cycle or 29.1 miles per gallon if you go for the Avant Estate version. How's that been done? Well, it isn't only that the engine's smaller in size, it also benefits from a cylinder deactivation system that disengages four of the eight cylinders under part load to maximise fuel efficiency. There's also a start-stop system that cuts the engine when you don't need it, if you're stuck at lights or if you're waiting in heavy traffic, plus an energy recuperation system which gathers in electrical energy that would otherwise be lost when you're cruising or braking, then it uses it to reduce fuel consumption. All of this you can use to justify S6 purchase. But I do have to point out that for around £7,000 less, you could get yourself a diesel-powered 3.0-litre by TDI Quattro A6 model with sporty S-line trim that would be only half a second slower from rest to 62 miles per hour, yet would be 25% cleaner and 50% more frugal. The by TDI would also be four groups lower on the insurance scale, and S6 is rated at group 42. And more on welcome news for the prospective S6 customers will come with the realisation that depreciation is not as bulletproof as many have come to take for granted from Audi. It's no wonder then that this is a car that makes a very canny use-by two or three years down the line. It's tempting to dismiss this S6 on a number of grounds. For Audi owners, it's not as agile as an S4 that would save you plenty. And it's not as fast as the kind of RS6 that wouldn't cost that much more. And that's before you even start to consider the talented opposition that's out there. But as soon as you do, you begin to realise that within its little market niche, this car is really something quite special. All its rivals are merely ordinary executive saloons with big petrol engines. There's no bespoke motorsport development. In other words, you can't have a proper Empower BMW or AMG developed Mercedes of this size for this kind of money. But you can have a fully fledged S series Audi, purpose designed by the performance specialists at Quattro GmbH, and therein 
lies the appeal of this S6. Within its little segment, it is the genuine article. It's also a very clever car indeed. Nearly 30 to the gallon from a car that de-restricted would reach 190 miles per hour. Well, that's active cylinder technology for you. Technology that rivals currently can't match. But efficiency doesn't sell cars like this. For that, your Audi Centre will sell you the deeply impressive A6 3.0-litre TDI by Turbo. No, you will buy this S6 because of the way it makes you feel. So what if an RS6 is faster, or an M5, or an E63 come to that? Who cares if a, a BMW 550i, or a Jaguar XFR are more overtly driver-orientated? This, in contrast, is the stealth bomber of the executive segment, the car that creeps in under the radar. The only one in its sector with four-wheel drive, and the only one with Audi's S-inspired ring of confidence. Four rings, in fact. <laughs>